Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Kaldron, and today I'm gonna to show you how to easily create trap melodies using Scalar 2. So as I'm sure we already know at this point, Plugin Boutique last week released Scalar 2 with some great new additions and features. I've done a full review on Scalar 2, so I'm gonna link it up top here for you in case you missed it. Now Scalar is predominantly used to create chord progressions from scales and keys, but with this new version, we also get some new features that make music creation really easy. So then today I wanna show you some of these new features and how you can use them specifically to create trap melodies and hopefully get you to creating more. I'll be linking Scalar 2 down below for your convenience, but without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so jumping into Studio One, here I have a beat that I've already made, and if you notice, I have it duplicated, and that's simply because I have two main melodies that were created with two separate features in Scalar 2. What I'm going to do then is play the beat with both, and then walk you through how I made each, so let's take a listen. This is melody number one. And this is melody number two. Okay, so now that you know what these two melodies sound like, let's take a look at number one first. One of the staples of trap music is catchy and repetitious melodies, and there's a bunch of ways to get this done, like adding an arpeggio, for example. But one of my new favorite ways to do this is to use the new performance expressions in Scalar 2. The new performance expressions in Scalar 2 more or less allow you to play different styles and articulations using notes and chords with minimal effort, which can ultimately make for some really great and easy arrangements. To start creating melodies with this new feature, the first thing you have to do is select a scale. So you're gonna go over here to where it says scales, click on that, and then pick one. Now in my case, in this beat, I had E flat minor, so I'm gonna select that. If you notice, as soon as I selected my scale, I immediately got the chords that go with that scale, and you can see them down here. Not only that, but we also got the notes in that scale highlighted in blue, and you can see them up on the keyboard up top here. From there, go up top here to where it says perform and click to activate, and you'll know that it's on because it'll turn blue and start blinking. And while you're up here, also make sure you're on expressions. You can also use arpeggios if you wanted to, because as mentioned, in the beginning, this is another great way to create trap melodies, but at least for this video, we will only be focusing on expressions. Now, once you have this activated, you'll notice that if we were to press a key, instead of just getting one note, we now get a specific expression. Take a listen. So what you just heard now was created from one single note, but where things get really interesting is when you start to use chords. To make this even easier, go down here to where you see the chords and press this B button. What this will do is basically assign each chord to one key on the keyboard, starting with C2 to make everything easier to play. So then if I were to press C2, I'm actually going to be playing E flat minor, and more than that, I'll be playing a specific expression based off that chord. Take a listen. As you can probably already tell, that was the beginning of the first melody that I used for my beat. So all you really have to do is once you have an expression selected, is mess around and figure out what chord progression best fits your beat. For this specific beat, I used three chords, which were E flat minor, A flat minor, and G flat major. So if I were to play that, it would sound like this. We repeat. and then we introduce a G flat major. Now this is just one expression, there's a bunch more for you to choose from, so just to give you another quick example, right now I am under the Adagio category using the Accento preset, so let me just go ahead and just pick another one. Let me do this one here. It's a little too fast, so I'm gonna bring it down to half time. This is using the same progression. Now, 
Now, two things that I will say about this is that not all performance expressions will fit a trap beat. So you do have to kind of look around and see what best fits your needs. There's a lot of great ones, but some of them don't quite fit. Number two is that sometimes you'll come across an expression that sounds really good, but it might be too slow or too fast. What you want to do at that point is basically go up here to this little selector. This is a resolution selector and either bring it down to half time or bring it up to double time. Now, this is exactly what happened with this one here. This one was way too fast at normal speed. So I brought it down to half speed. Okay, so now let's take a look at how I created the second melody. Now, another one of my favorite ways to create trap melodies is to do what's called a call and response with a chord and then the individual notes that make up that chord. This basically means that you will play a chord and then follow that with the individual notes that make up that chord in some sort of melodic structure, play another chord, and then just repeat the process. In Scalar 2, we have two new key lock features called chord and chord extensions that allow you to do this call and response method really, really easy. What these features do is basically allow you to play a chord and then it locks and assigns the notes that make up that chord to specific keys on the keyboard and then highlights them in green. To show you this, I'm going to take the same scale that we've used in this beat, which is E flat minor, and use the same progression for the beat, which was E flat minor, A flat minor, and G flat major. To activate this new key lock feature, go up to the top here to where it says key lock and press it. And again, you'll know that it's on because it'll turn blue and start blinking. From here, the two new key lock options are going to be towards the bottom here. Here, the chord notes and chord extensions. Now for this example, I am going to keep it in chord notes. And the only difference between chord notes and chord extensions is that chord extensions also includes extended notes like sevenths and ninths, which ultimately all that means is that you can play more intricate melodies. But for this example, again, I'm just going to stick to chord notes. Now again, for this example, we're also going to keep this bind MIDI feature here, which pretty much allows us to play these chords with the touch of one single key. But okay, for example, if I were to play an E flat minor chord, you notice that the notes for this chord are E flat, G flat, and B flat. Scalar will now then lock these notes in and assign them to specific keys here on the keyboard, which are now highlighted in green. Now these notes will be depicted by the numbers one, two, and three in these green notes. So an E flat will be a one, a G flat will be a two, and a B flat will be a three. Take a listen. And they do go up in octaves. Now, the cool thing about this feature is that it is dynamic, so it will change with whatever chord you happen to be playing at the moment. So if I were to play the next chord in my progression, which is an A flat minor, the notes for that are A flat, B natural, and E flat. So these notes have now changed to match that. Take a listen. What this ultimately means is that now you can play a chord using your left hand and pressing only one key and then using your right hand to create a melody using the exact same notes of the chord you just played. The best part is that you know this will sound good because the melody that you would be creating is made up of the exact same notes of the chord you just played. So then for my second melody, I basically followed the exact same chord progression, but followed each chord with a little melody that was constructed of the same notes from that chord. So then if I were to play that for you now, it would sound like this. So then to bring it back into the mix here again is the first melody that was created using the new performance expressions. And here's the second melody that I created using the new key lock features. Now the cool thing that I'm figuring out now is that I could probably use both of these melodies in this beat whenever I arrange it. This could be more of like the hook, the chorus, the main part, and this could be more of the verse. So there you go. So there you have it, two ways to easily create trap melodies using Scalar 2. If you want to learn more about Scalar 2 and all of its new features, then definitely give my review a watch. I'll be leaving that along with the plugin itself down below in the description for your convenience. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, like this video if you like to subscribe if you're not already. But I'll see you on the next one.